this is quite an unusual subject to paint, but ultimately all it is is really shapes. So first I'll get in this big shape. You can see how easy it is to just place it in the wrong spot, only slightly, but um, every little bit counts actually. So it's really just a big boxy shape. So once I place that in the, the right spot, then I can pretty well start to really sort of get some of those smaller shapes and the, the more interlocking shapes as well. So the uh, interesting part with this, with it being the metal that it is, it's not sort of super shiny, which I probably would have preferred actually, because uh, uh, a lot of times with the stainless steel, I don't really go for the full, unless it's a vase, I think that sculpted circular sort of, um, it doesn't, with this being a square shape, I think it would just reflect too much of sort of all the surrounds where, so that was just an interesting thing to observe. So I'm just using a size six brush. It's a little stiff synthetic, which I haven't really used that much in general over the years, but I'm finding it not a bad brush to block in with because it uh, gives me nice sharp edges. And if anything, normally when I start, I probably uh, go a little too soft edged and soft shape, soft shape, but with this one, I think this will work out beautifully. So now I've got the big brush, my size 12 hog hair. Really am just sculpting in with those big shapes in the background. A little bit of French ultra blue and a little bit of a lizard in there. But ultimately I'm looking for a particular light and dark value. Because as they always sort of say that Colour really is one thing, but getting that right value is so, so important. It's the thing that'll give me the light effect, give me depth. So I'm just cutting back in there. There's always a tendency to actually tighten up a little too much, especially in the early stages, but if it's when we've probably got the most energy mentally, physically, uh, and we're always sort of looking to sort of make a good start and sometimes I think that enthusiasm can actually bring us a little unstuck. So that's why it's so great to keep with the big brushes. Looks like I've just added a little bit of white into a French ultramarine blue, lizarin, and a little bit of yellow ochre into this mix. So I'll be looking at that mid-tone of this uh, whole end. I'm not sort of isolating one little shape or one little area. It's a average of that whole shape. And then normally, as I will go on, I'll uh, look for those slight little darker values, slight little, uh, little highlights and lighter values. Okay, the magic of time-lapse. It's now interesting to see how much reflection is coming through. Because uh, what I'm aiming to do is put uh, some shapes, some peaches in the background. There's the cutting board. And at this stage I'm sort of getting some of those more fine-tuned edges. That's the interesting thing with painting. When we start with, especially being an oil painting, we start with the big shapes, just the broad value, shape, colour. But there does come a point where we do have to start to say to ourselves, okay, this looks like a value of about four or five. It's the edge of the, the bread, the toast. So it's going to be a yellowy ochre colour. So that's when we have, there comes that crunch point where we do need to start to put in thicker paint, more definite paint. And it's 
I have to admit, it's always a little moment of sort of uncertainty because we're never quite sure just how things are going. That's why it's nice to see it jump now. I can sort of see that some of the, the light is starting to fall nicely. One thing I didn't actually sort of allude to was that I have tried to paint uh, butter before and you would think it's just a little block of yellowy ochre but I'd always struggle with it for some reason. Um, but typical sort of of how I like to work, instead of sort of ignoring it or just staying away from it, I prefer to tackle it head on, be prepared to fail more times with the ultimate aim and idea and ambition is for it to eventually work for me. So that's kind of how I found I get success in an overall sense because the success in one painting or in one area it may not translate directly into another painting, say subject matter wise, but the process of failure and success is kind of relevant right through all the different subjects, whether you're painting a tractor or a, or a train or even just a beach scene. If you're having trouble in an area, um, it's kind of uh, problem solving more than anything. So, and we, and we can get confidence from um, one painting into another. So this is plenty of titanium white on that mix and also here. My thought is where there's plenty of light, there must be plenty of white. So now it's a good time to come in and carve in around. And this will sort of place the, the, the lightest, biggest shape. So it will really start to uh, throw that sense of light and shadow onto the bench top. But it doesn't hurt to have just a tiny little bit of yellow in there as well. It's probably just a little bit of cadmium yellow. And I normally do like to use a cool white light for still life when I'm setting it up. just blasting through here just always stepping back to analyze and check the overall shapes because even though it's starting to look quite finished in especially the right hand side uh, there's still a certain amount of sort of guesswork uncertainty so that's why I do find stepping back always to be one of the greater the best places to be able to assess how I'm going, if it's working. So now that that big shape's in, it's really starting to tie the light on the cutting board and, and on the butter and on the toaster. So you can see I just threw another peach in. That was always bothering me, that shape. It was a kind of a lead-in line out of the scene. So that was always a concern and it's funny some of these sort of little elements of composition we don't actually work out or realize or know fully we can have a sort of a estimated guess as to oh, this might be a problem but this one I didn't see so but I thought you know what it's very easy to adjust and fix so it didn't take too long and I think it actually enhanced the overall scene beautifully so ties the background color wise and shape wise into the the foreground so that's starting to really come together nicely there now and the tricky part the fact that this is in quite a bit of shadow I have to sort of estimate how much color is going to be in the shadows but that's a great lesson just in itself. 
okay time to sort of wrap things up hope you enjoyed the painting today all the best bye for now